Hi guys, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now before I begin, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications. In 1846, the descendants of George Washington reached out to the federal government with an offer to sell his estate for 100000 The federal government refused, although the army did offer to acquire the property for use as an asylum for disabled soldiers. Insulted, the descendants then doubled the asking price. After the government turned down the purchase offer, a few developers proposed purchasing the property in order to develop a hotel. Outraged, a group of prominent women created the Mount Vernon Ladies' Association of the Union and borrowed money from the state of Virginia to purchase the property. They then charged a small admission fee to repay the loan. Yet shortly after the Civil War broke out, and it looked like the grounds were in danger of becoming a battlefield. So how did Mount Vernon survive? I'll let you know at the end of this video. But while not, strictly speaking, a land purchase, the unique way in which the acquisition of Mount Vernon was financed is very similar to the non-traditional tools that are often used to finance vacant land purchases. Now, if you've watched some of our other videos, you may notice that I often mention how difficult it is to find financing for the purchase of raw or vacant land. But there are land loans out there, and in certain circumstances, you can take advantage of them when you purchase raw land. So if this is what you are planning on doing, in today's video, I'm gonna go over six of the top things you should know about land loans. First of all, a land loan, as the name would suggest, finances the purchase of a plot of land. But in certain circumstances, it can also finance the construction of a building. When this is the case, it is usually called a construction loan. Number two, there are several kinds of land loans. There are lot loans, which are usually offered to folks who are looking to purchase land in order to build. Then there are land loans, or alternatively recreational land loans, which tend to be products that provide financing for the purchase of recreational land, such as hunting, fishing, or forest land. And as I mentioned earlier, there are also construction loans, which can fund both the acquisition of a property and the construction of a building on it. And then there are farm loans. This is a very broad category and there is a whole agricultural finance industry but a number of agricultural finance institutions do provide loans for the acquisition of land for the purpose of growing crops or ranching. Number three, outside of the agricultural finance industry, construction loans tend to be more common than land loans, especially when one is purchasing land for the purpose of building a home. There are also a wider range of institutions, including conventional banks that will provide construction loans, and this is because both FHA and USDA back construction loans so long as the borrower meets all their requirements. But there are a few different categories of construction loans that fall under two primary umbrellas. The first are construction to permanent loans. And these are construction loans that will convert to a permanent mortgage once the building is constructed. Thus, you won't have to get a second loan after the construction is complete. These tend to be structured as interest only during construction and then principal plus interest after conversion. The construction to permanent loan has a number of advantages, but the biggest one is that you only need to apply for a loan and pay closing costs once. Having said this, there are also construction only loans. As the name would suggest, this is a loan that is short term and which covers the construction period only. Thus, you would need to get separate financing at the end of the construction period. So you'll need to apply for two loans and pay closing costs twice. However, some people do like to go this route because you have more flexibility and sometimes you can work out better terms on either or both of the loans when you use two separate institutions for the construction and permanent loan. Number four, construction loans have several requirements. While construction loans tend to be more common than simple land loans, they are not as easy to get as a regular home mortgage. And this makes sense given that the loan is a riskier prospect since it relies on your ability to complete construction on time and in budget. Thus, the application process is a bit more onerous. You should expect to submit all building plans for approval by the lender. You will also likely need to show that you already have all approvals from relevant agencies before they will approve a construction loan. Although in certain circumstances, if there is a short time frame by which you need to acquire the property, there may be some exceptions to this. 
You will also need to select your contractor ahead of time since the contractor or builder will be reviewed and approved by the lender as well. You and your financial situation will be reviewed and you will need to show that you have the resources necessary to make what is often a large down payment, but there will be other financial requirements as well, depending on the bank. Usually you will need a high credit score and you may also need to make a personal guarantee or show a letter of credit from another institution. Now it's also important to know that a construction loan is not dispersed all at once. Because construction is a risky venture, the loans will be dispersed in segments throughout the construction period based on a pre-approved schedule. And before any dispersion, the lender will often have their own selected inspector go out to review construction progress and make sure that everything is moving forward smoothly. Number five. Now, many conventional banks do have construction loan options, but a land loan, that is a loan just for the purchase of land, is less common and will usually be provided by a specialty lender. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there is a whole agricultural finance network, and a lot of land loans are provided by institutions within this framework. Some of the big players include agricultural credit associations or agricultural banks. There are also a number of agricultural non-bank finance companies that provide various kinds of land loans. But then community banks and credit unions or smaller savings and loan banks may also have land loan products available, especially those that are based in more rural areas. And number six, keep in mind that land loans do have some disadvantages. Again, they tend to be viewed as more risky than a traditional home mortgage, and thus there are more hoops and less favorable terms. Their primary disadvantage is that they can be hard to get. Depending on the kind of land loan that you are looking to obtain and your proposed use of the land, there may only be a few institutions that will have a product that meets your needs. You will also need to make a large down payment, so expect at a minimum a 20% down payment, but in some circumstances, this could be even higher. Interest rates on land loans also tend to be higher than conventional mortgages. And you will need to sell yourself, or in the case of a construction loan, your project. But let's return to Mount Vernon. Very soon after its purchase, the Civil War broke out. And yet Mount Vernon survived the ravages of war. And how did this happen? Well, Sarah Tracy, pictured here, the secretary of the Mount Vernon Ladies Association of the Union, moved into Mount Vernon and became its protector throughout the course of the war. She also undertook a vigorous campaign to make sure that soldiers on both sides respected the site. For example, she demanded an audience with General Winifield Scott, based out of Washington, who agreed to forbid his soldiers from entering the grounds under arms. She also received a similar pledge from the Virginia governor regarding Confederate troops. And as officers were replaced throughout the course of the war, she continued to meet with new generals and leaders to enforce these terms. And as visitation plummeted during the Civil War, she made up for the loss in revenue by selling potatoes, peaches, pears, tomatoes, cabbages, hay, and handmade bricks, as well as photographs of the site. So we have her efforts to thank for Mount Vernon's continual existence, even through some of the darkest periods of U.S. history. Now, do you have any stories about unique financing or land loans? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? You're going to love our Gokche Land Due Diligence program. We'll make you a land due diligence expert in just seven days. Check it out at gokchecapital.com glad. And while you're at our website, don't forget to explore our $1 down properties at gokchecapital.com listings. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. You can email, call, or text, and we will respond as soon as possible. So thank you for listening, and more to come. Music